Hello and welcome to the Chilean Eats podcast. I am Connie and I am podcasting from Santiago de Chile. A little bit about me. I am a graphic designer and a photographer. And I started knitting around five years ago when I was pregnant with Emma, my five-year-old daughter. Uh, it was quite a journey because it took me a really long time to actually grasp the technique. I sort of um, went through loom knitting, crochet, um, and when I say loom knitting, I mean like all the shapes, triangles, rectangles, weird circles, and <laughs> all sorts of them. And um, in the end, I sort of decided that I really wanted to try knitting because I preferred the the fabric that um, a knitting garment had, like against um, the crochet um, texture of things, um, especially for like things like sweaters or um, shawls and things like that. Because I sort of felt that crochet was more a little bit more stiff. I know it's sort of like a tension thing and you can sort of change that depending on the hook that you use but I, th I thought that <clears throat> I think that the, um, the the actual texture of the stitches was not at the time what I wanted for things that I would wear as a garment. I still do crochet, um, I use that technique for making baby blankets sometimes or home decorations. Um, but so far, I think I only made one sweater for Emma out of crochet a really long time ago. And I remember thinking at the time that I thought it was a little bit stiff. It ended up being more like a jacket. So <clears throat> after, I, I remember after actually working on that little cardigan, um, I thought, okay, it's time for me to learn how to knit because I really want to have that sort of more um, flowy, soft texture like I was at the time I was thinking about stocking it stitch or garter stitch or things like that um, it took me a little time to learn because I didn't really know anybody at the time who actually knit anybody my age so I bought a couple of needles on a trip uh, in um, Finland <laughs> of all places I got a um, set of interchangeables from Knitpro, those that are made out of uh, all the colourful wood. And they sort of sat in my craft room for a really long time. I sort of looked at them and sort of felt a little bit afraid to try them out. But then I started looking at tutorials and <clears throat> the, uh, the actual knitting part was not that hard for me because uh, since I knew how to crochet, I sort of grabbed the whole continental style of knitting uh, quite quickly. My problem was a little bit more regarding dropping stitches and sort of learning how to read my knitting, which was something that took a little bit of time, but I was very, very persistent as I normally am with things that I am really interested in craft-wise. And so I managed to overcome those things little by little. I started um, sort of challenging myself a little bit at a time. On each project I picked something that was a little bit harder and so that way I sort of introduced a new technique to everything that I was making and I'm not saying in, in any way that I am a pro at knitting but at least from my humble beginnings I have learned quite a lot and I am still obsessed after all this time. I don't think it's ever going to go away. And I am little by little getting more and more obsessed with dyeing yarn as well. And that um, idea of dyeing yarn came to me when I was um, buying, well, um, before I go on, you guys need to know that in Chile, we don't really have the sort of yarns that you guys have in the shops. We don't have yarn stores like you guys do. They only sort of sell acrylic because that's what people normally knit with here, which is completely fine. That's what I started knitting with. But I stopped using that because 
I normally knit shawls and things that require blocking and as you guys know acrylic sort of does not <clears throat> block well at all it just returns to what it was when you washed it and so I started uh, importing yarn like buying yarn from different dyes um, that I liked and started knitting with that and learned how to make socks and shawls and um, <clears throat> After a little bit, I started wondering if I could actually dye my own yarn because um, if you guys know me from my Instagram account and you've seen some of my pictures, you will know that I'm very prone to very bright colours uh, for knitting and wearing. Right now I'm not wearing anything very bright but normally I'm sort of wearing very hot pinks or neon yellows and especially now that it's summer, it's like crazy colours all over the place and I wanted to dye yarn that was um, sort of a reflection of what I liked um, colour wise to knit with, to wear and so I bought a bag of um, white skeins, bare skeins of yarn and I started experimenting <clears throat> and at the time I had met uh, Chelsea, Sue, Debbie and Amy which are my dearest friends and they sort of encouraged me to keep trying and when I showed them my results they told me and suggested that I should open a shop and at the time I wasn't really sure that I would have time because I'm a photographer and have a studio and so I didn't know if I was going to be able to share that sort of work with this because it's sort of um, it's very time consuming so um, still, I'm taking it very easy. I don't really dye a lot of yarn at the t um, I don't really dye a lot of yarn all at once. I normally dye very little batches of colors because um, I'm sort of like sharing my time between the whole uh, dyeing, crafty hobby thing that I love, and my other side, which is my photography, which I, I also really like and I enjoy immensely. Um, at the same time, I'm <clears throat> a mom, um, I'm as five, Felix, my son, is just turned two, so I sort of try to distribute my time between my hobbies, which is really my hobbies, like, I couldn't say that I actually have a job, like a proper job, and so you're gonna laugh at the word proper, but it's the proper word to say it. Um, I just I'm very lucky to be able to say that my sort of work is actually my hobby because photography was a hobby until I sort of did a master's on it and then it's still my hobby because I love it and then knitting is my hobby and then dyeing is still a hobby but I sort of dye yarn and sell a little bit of what I dye to other people and that sort of makes me really happy because I feel that I'm sort of reaching out to all of you with the crazy colours that I dye. <laughs> um, anyway, enough of that. Um, I started podcasting because I felt a little bit isolated from the knitting community really. Um, I've been wanting to do this for a really long time, even before I met Chelsea and Sue and Amy and Debbie and even, be even before I had an Instagram account. I sort of I'm, I watched a few podcasts for a really long time, 90% um, knitting, uh, Lisa, she's awesome, she's the dyer behind um, Fibre and Earth Dye Works. Uh, the, uh, I also used to watch a podcaster called Blooming Knitter, and I'm, I'm not sure she's um, podcasting anymore, but I'm sort of like mentioning people that I sort of watched since the beginning, uh, the Fat Squirrel, Amy Beth, she's amazing. Um, well, and I can, the list goes on and on. I'll mention uh, some of my favourites as I keep on podcasting. I'm just sort of mentioning a few that I've known for a really long time and sort of inspired me to be wanting to podcast. Um, I didn't do that at the time because I thought that I did not have anything to bring to the knitting community with a podcast then. I was just starting to knit and I didn't really know much about it. I didn't know much about yarn because I was just 
sort of like weaning off the acrylic and starting off with a proper wall. And so uh, I sort of started putting it off and off and off and off. And now that I've come back from Rhinebeck, which was an amazing experience, I met so many wonderful people and I finally met in person my loveliest friends. And they sort of um, gave me that final push, so thank you guys to start podcasting and sharing with you what I've been doing and knitting. And let's um, get on with what we're all here for, which is knitting and talking about knitting, enough about myself, right? Um, and first thing first, I wanted to mention that a few people have um, been messaging me on Ravelry and Instagram to ask me about the um, two at a time socks um, button technique thing um, that I do so that you don't, guys don't have to separate the um, the yarn into cakes um, so what I do basically is I grab any button and I grab the yarn from the inside of the cake the little strand from the inside of the cake and the strand from the outside of the cake. And I sort of um, put them through the little holes in the button and then I just start knitting with one end, you knit one sock and the other end you start the other sock. And basically that's how it's done. Um, I will try to take a few pictures to insert here of the steps for you guys to do it, but it should be pretty straightforward and shouldn't have much trouble with it. Um, it normally does happen that when you pull the center of the cake, it will have a little bit of yarn buff in it, but once you get past that, you should not have any issues with the, with the technique. Um, it's been really useful for me. I, it helps me keep my yarn untangled because I can see how it's twisting so I sort of go untwisting it. I, I can still do that without the button but the button does really um, sort of help with the whole knotting and the whole situation. Especially if you're sort of starting with that, I, I seriously recommend it. Um, now uh, I'm gonna talk about my whips. I'm gonna try and do it quickly because I don't think I have much memory left and I want to finish this section before I start filming a different surprise section that I'm going to film tomorrow morning before I edit the podcast for uploading it. And I'm going to tell you all about that tomorrow, but for now, just the whips. No FOS today. Um, I've been uh, multitasking so much on my whips that I haven't been able to finish any, so whips is going to have to do. So, first. First of them all, uh, in my chicken boots bag, I will try and put a link on the video to this brand. They make incredible bags. Um, if I could, I'd buy them all. Um, I love them. They have transparency. You can see your projects inside. They have pockets. They have all sorts of shapes. They have needle cases. They're incredible. And they have the most gorgeous fabrics. In this lovely bag, I have my seven seas of rye obviously I um, didn't finish the roll sorry I was waiting for him outside of school today and sort of had to shoot off and couldn't but you can sort of uh, get the idea um, this yarn is a lovely yarn from Canada it's called Handmaiden Casba it's an NCN blend and it's in the charcoal colorway and it shows the stitch definition so beautifully and the texture is just mm, it's lovely um, I was taken by the lovely Ramona to the shop in Toronto she'll have to remind me the name of it where I got this yarn and I saw on display the gorgeous Rhine Lust sorry for murdering the name of this I'm sure the Rhine Lush shawl on this um, sort of like sample table and I bought this yarn specifically to knit that shawl but um, 
when I started knitting it, I realized that I wasn't able to knit this um, shawl with my kids around me and playing and all that stuff because it sort of required a little bit of concentration and, I, and right now I'm sort of in the mindset for a little bit of a more simple knit. So I started this, it's very easy, I've memorized the pattern and I love the way it looks. Um, I saw this uh, shawl knit up at Rhinebeck. It was a gorgeous sample and when I saw it I was like, oh man, I really need to knit that. And so when I noticed that the Rhinelast was not happening, I um, immediately thought of this pattern, bought it and started knitting it straight away. Um, my next project is um, my pair of Rhinebeck socks. I bought these yarns uh, the day before the fair started. Uh, this is Madeleine Tosh um, uh, in the Magic colorway in the sock uh, base. And this is the Hedgehog Fibers sock base in the Harajuku, Harajuku colorway. Oh, and this bag, guys, I'll, I'll put a photo of these uh, on the video so you guys can see it better. This bag was a gift from my friend Debbie Reese, who I love. She's so lovely. <laughs> and uh, she, when I was, um, when I arrived to Rhinebeck, she was knitting out of this bag and I looked at it and I was like, oh my God, I love it so much. It's gorgeous. And those colors and all that stuff. And she's like, oh, it's a Mrs. Brown's bag. And um, I said, yeah, I know, but I've never been able to get my hands on one. So the next day she surprised me by giving me her bag and so I gave her one of mine and we had a little back, uh, impromptu back swap and now whenever I'm knitting with this I think of her and when I'm knitting on the socks I think of my lovely friends that spent time with me back at Rhinebeck. It was so nice to be with you guys and I miss you. Um, and so yes, these are my Rhinebeck socks, they're vanilla socks, I made them mismatching because I love mismatching socks. I know many of you guys will go mental thinking about socks that don't match each other but to me they're like the best socks ever. Uh, next socks, I'm and this is just crazy that I haven't finished them because they're both, uh, I've cast them off, I just need to start working on the um, afterthought heels. You will have to forgive me, but I completely forgot the brand of this, or uh, the name of the dyer, this yarn. Um, I will try to get it because I have a, a few other skeins from her and I will e either put it down here or on the uh, show notes for this episode. But I will, um, I think I'll put the show notes on my um, Tillinitz podcast um, group on Ravelry, but I will also add them on the down bar here. I think I've never done this before, so please excuse me if everything's not there in the beginning because I sort of need to get the hang of things. Um, I will add the name of this in case you really like them because the colors are just incredible, aren't they? Just super bright. They also don't exactly match, but I love them. I always knit socks two at a time. These are vanilla socks. It's just my own recipe. And um, I actually took it from the um, socks on a plane recipe for socks. Uh, I just don't do the pattern that the socks on a plane um, pattern has. And it's a free, it's a free pattern on Ravelry. This bag, um, I made it. It's uh, made out of this canvasy fabric and it's got like a chevron little fabric inside with cute cocktails. Um, what else? Okay, so this is something that I've been knitting for a really long time. It's also in one of my bags. I thought that I was going to be able to wear this at Rhinebeck and I was incredibly mistaken because it's taken me a longer time than I expected to knit this. Um, I absolutely adore this pattern. Um, it's the Recoleta um, Cardigan by Jorge Locatelli. Um, I bought this yarn specifically for this pattern in one of my trips to the States um, in April. And I started it in April, but it's um, taken me a really long time to knit it because it's got a lot of charts. 
it's it's not by any means a difficult pattern please don't think that I haven't finished this because it's a hard knit it's just that it does require uh, quiet and concentration because it has a few charts and um, since I have kids I don't I don't normally have that sort of quiet time so I was not able to finish it but I am hoping and, and since now for us it's starting to be summer it's not something that I really want to knit on because it's getting quite large and it's sort of really hot but um, here it is what I have. obviously I haven't finished the row again <laughs> you'll notice that I do that a lot with my um, knitting uh, I get interrupted a lot and so uh, yes but so this is the um, Recoleta sweater by Jorge Locatelli I'm knitting it out of Malarigo yarn in Rios um, it's in the Ravelry Red colorway 611 I love the color it's just so bright and vibrant and beautiful and the depth of it is just insane can't, I seriously can't wait to wear this, so I'm sort of hoping and mentally setting a goal for myself um, to finish this in January when I go to the lake house for holidays since I probably will have more time there to just sit and knit and not be interrupted all the time by different um, situations um, and hopefully I'll be able to wear it uh, next year at Rhyme because I'm also going next year. I can't wait for that time to come. I'm super excited to be able to see all my friends again and to go to that wonderful fair. I mean, it was like Disneyland for knitters. Seriously. If you haven't been there, you totally have to go. I completely recommend it. So, as if it wasn't enough with all the whips that I have, I've decided to cast on um, a hat. Um, Melissa from the Spicy Home Make It podcast and I were talking. If you haven't seen her podcast, please go right now and watch it. It's incredible. She's an amazing knitter and she's incredibly lovely. Um, she and I were talking about knitting and I told her about this hat that I wanted to knit. Um, it's by... It's by Mandarins. Be Mandarins, I think she is um, on Instagram. Um, I don't know if you can actually see this from that distance, but if not, I'll insert a photo on the video of what it looks like. Um, the pattern does require 250 yards of DK weight yarn. Oh, I think it's worsted, actually. Yeah, it's worsted. But I think that sort of accounts for the pom-pom the hat has, and I'm going to use a super cute pom-pom that my lovely friend Caroline from Germany sent me once and funnily enough I had just uh, bought this stunning yarn from Wollenwein Christine. I love her yarns she has the most wonderful subtle colorways and I had just bought this colorway it's called Myth um, from her a while ago and was looking for a pattern to use it with and this hat was just the perfect occasion. I saw the picture on the cover of the pattern and it was sort of like a similar colour. Normally I would not knit anything in the same colour as the pattern dictates but it just looked so gorgeous and I had the pom pom to go with it and so I think it's gonna look amazing and I can't wait to wear it next winter. So Let's see how that goes and hopefully you'll see pictures of this on Instagram. Maybe next podcast I'll have a little bit of this knit up. Um, I think that's going to be all for knitting for now. Um, the, these are all the whips I have. I have a couple more but they're not like advanced enough for me to show you. Um, I'm not really sure if I'm going to frog them or not so I'd rather not put them on the video just yet. Um, yesterday I invited my mom to participate in my podcast uh, in a section that we will call Art and Yarn. The idea is that she will introduce us every week to a different artist and she'll challenge me 
to dye one skein of yarn inspired in one of their artworks or just yes yes inspired in artworks and so with that said I'll let my mom uh, introduce herself well I'm Connie's mom so Langston is my name uh, I live at Chile of course um, and well thanks mm -hmm. for inviting me to this adventure um, but well, we are going to try the best. Today, like knitting chili, I choose a Chilean artist, a very, very special artist. He's an hyper-realistic uh, hyper artist. Um, he was painting at, at Spain uh, people, the society of, of Spain. Uh, but uh, he discovered Morocco and uh, because of his light, he moved to live at Morocco and then he became a, a painter of yarn, uh, of tapestry, of rugs and uh, of paper, papers. And fabrics too. Fabrics right? also, yes. Um, it's, I, have an, I have a story because he finds this uh, another kind of things to paint. Uh, he has three visiting sister, and uh, they came to his house uh, with uh, some. Um, uh, he chiffed one day uh, when uh, he, he he saw some package uh, over the table, and he saw oh here is uh, something that I can paint. And after that, he began to to see. Uh, other things to paint and well he find the John and you can find beautiful pictures of him well you can find it in in YouTube or in, in books but uh, he is very very good painter is he still alive no he died unfortunately <laughs> passed away yeah he passed away <laughs> yeah my English is not so good but it's, he's, all, it's uh, very good don't yeah worry. but we try. <laughs> okay, and uh, that's it for today. Uh, Claudio Bravo is going to be the name of the John that you, you are going to die. To die. Mm -hmm. And we are going to see that. Uh, mm -hmm. And I will. Work. I will insert some pictures of his work after this video. So you guys can um, see more or less what my mom was talking about and I will show you at the end of that video which is the um, piece of work that he... No? Yeah, the, the, the piece of John that you are... The, 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 art, the art piece that yes. you want me to... Is it this one? Nope. Uh, it's this one. Okay. Do you want uh, to show yes, it? Yes, of course. Here it is. Here is the artist. Okay, so my mom wants me to dye a skein of yarn in these colors. And so I will do my best to yeah. emulate that. The name is going to, we are going to call the same name as, as the, the artist. artist that we choose. This one it's going to be Bravo. Just Bravo. Just Bravo, not just, Claudio Bravo? Claudio, just Bravo. Yeah, okay, and yeah. I'll show you the skein of yarn on the next episode, and she will challenge me again. Another that, artist. And uh, the second one is going to be from the United States. Uh, I know, but it's going to be a surprise. It has to be a surprise no, for yes, me it's as gonna well. Be a surprise. <laughs> yeah. With that, uh, I'll say goodbye. Thank you so much for watching the first episode of the podcast. I hope that you'll come back for the next one. Uh, if you need to contact me, please do so through Ravelry, Instagram or my email. I'll put all that information down below. Um, and then see you. Okay. Uh, lots of love for Rhymebeck new friends that I got. Right. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.